So I'm just pointing at the build plane, which contains in this case a 10 micron printed uh, object. I'm going to be moving with this 3D printed object from the printer, which I just explained and I won't repeat myself. So anybody wanting to have a look, feel free to reach out. We do guide it to us, most of them virtual these days, but once in a while we actually also open the doors to visitors. So this is a 3D printed pipe or a 3D printed injection mold that will eventually turn into a pipe. And now I'm going to move from the printer into the second phase of the operation. We, of course, need at this stage to remove the printed part from the build plane. And that happens basically here. I can do it. But I won't be able to move all the steps through with you guys. So now this part is actually ready for cleaning. Cleaning takes place in this station here, beautiful little machine. Everything we do is based on the same basic footprint. We've developed our own lab bench because we want to be absolutely ensure that we can provide a ventilated enclosure that allows operators to operate machinery safely and efficiently without having to concern themselves with spilling stuff on the table or evacuating stuff from tanks or, or whatever. We try to ensure that, for instance, this uh, cleaning station is fully ATEX approvable so that we have the opportunity of supporting regulatory requirements in whatever market we are actually uh, working. So after the cleaning process, which takes about 20 minutes for a typical batch of components, we move into the post curing. Post curing is a standard process that happens over here. We use these little uh, UV curing ovens from uh, a dental company in, uh, in Europe. And what you get out of the post curing are printed tools. So these printed tools, we are now going to be filling. Sorry to be moving around, but it's part of the job myself. So now we move from the 3D printing showroom into the injection molding lab. I have prepared an injection molding machine, but I don't know if it fell asleep while I was talking. I hope everybody else is still awake. So this is one of those little machines that we have been using at trade shows uh, quite a few times. It's a baby plast. And what we do, if we come a little closer myself, is to insert this printed tool into this very simple cavity here. I have to close the lid, otherwise the machine won't go. And then what I do is simply to press go, and the machine goes. Now it's injecting material into the printed tool, and we'll have to wait about 30 seconds for the material to cool, because we want it to be only lukewarm when it comes out of the machine. So in a very little while, now. What we have here is now a printed tool cavity with some polypropylene inside. As you can probably imagine, it's going to be pretty tricky to get this geometry out of the printed tool. So we will have to do something which is one of those particularities of the Adifab technology, we'll have to dissolve the tool. Before we leave this beautiful injection mold in the laboratory, I just want you to have a quick look at what else we have on the floor. We've tried to see how big we can go, and so far we are at about uh, 20 centimeters component length, but some of the experiments that we are running with uh, injection molders are involving combined combinations of metal inserts, watch the stairs myself, and 3D printed inserts. So now we move to the last stage of the process. We are now back in the printer lab. Marcel is through the door. I'm not going to be messing around with parts that go into the demolding tank because the stuff in there will make this printed tool go away. But this is actually what allows us to make an intricate component like the one I showed in the little bit video a couple of, I think it was a month ago. Thank you for the opportunity, Morten. And this is what brings us into the component domain. In this case, 
a pretty intricate lattice, but it might also be a standard industrial injection molded component in a given material.